Weeks after these conjoined twins were born, the parents were forced to make an impossible decision. When Candace and Grayson McNeil welcomed conjoined twins, they cherished every moment they shared with them. However, just five weeks after their daughter's birth, the couple had to make an immensely difficult decision about their new arrivals, one in fact that no parent would envy. Before the twins' arrival, though, the McNeils were already the proud parents of three little girls. The family from Asheboro, North Carolina would become even bigger, of course, when the new babies were born. Their due date was November 15, 2017. However, 15 weeks into the pregnancy, Candace and Grayson were dealt a blow as an ultrasound scan revealed that the couple's twin girls were in fact conjoined. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the news came as a shock to the expectant parents. After all, conjoined twins are far from a regular occurrence. Indeed, data collected by the University of Maryland Medical Center suggests that the phenomenon occurs just once in every 200,000 live births. Sadly though, very few conjoined twins will live longer than 24 hours after they've entered the world. And even more tragically, many conjoined twins don't even get to take their first breaths. According to the University of Maryland Medical Center, somewhere between 40% and 60% of them are stillborn. Doctors duly warned Candace and Grayson then that their girls probably wouldn't survive outside the womb. Furthermore, the medical team offered the McNeils the option of terminating the pregnancy. The couple wouldn't hear of aborting their babies, though, as it was their belief that they should give their twins the best chance of survival. And in November 2017, Grayson would explain why he and his wife had come to that decision. In particular, he told Asheboro, North Carolina newspaper, The Courier Tribune, Termination was not an option for us. We don't believe that it's our right. Instead, the couple decided that Candace would carry their babies for as long as she could in order to give them the best chance of possibly thriving. That was despite the fact that the girls were joined at the shoulder and shared one body, meaning that surgeons would be unable to separate them. Subsequently, doctor's appointments would reveal, however, that Candace and Grayson's twins did still have two pairs of lungs between them, along with a heart each. Still, the babies needed to be kept under observation. And so, when a pediatric cardiologist diagnosed the girls with coronary problems, he subsequently referred Candace's care to Cincinnati Children's Hospital. There, Candace could receive the specialized treatment that she and her unborn babies needed, and a medical team duly figured out a schedule for the expectant mother. Then, on September 25, 2017, the mom of three moved into a Ronald McDonald house in Cincinnati, enabling her to live more closely to the hospital. And Candace's being near the facility was probably for the best, as during the next few weeks, she'd attend countless hospital visits, during which her pregnancy was monitored. With these, the overall aim was to get her ready for her baby's delivery. That way, if she went into labor early, both she and the hospital staff would know what to do. Candace was able to carry her babies to 37 weeks, though, at which point doctors decided to carry out a cesarean section. Consequently, twins Emily and Sophie arrived on October 26, 2017, at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And the day after the birth, the McNeils announced their happy news on Grayson's Facebook page. We are so thankful and honored to introduce to you all our newest additions to the McNeil tribe, Emily Rose and Sophie Bell McNeil. How blessed are we as parents to call these special little girls our daughters, they wrote. The following weeks were full of ups and downs for the family, however. Emily and Sophie had trouble breathing, and some of their organs were failing to work. So while Candace remained by their sides in Cincinnati, Grayson split his time between the hospital and Asheboro. And even though there was times when it seemed as though the twins' health was improving, that good fortune wouldn't last. That's because when Emily and Sophie were five weeks old, the girls' conditions began to wane, and as a result, their parents were faced with an unimaginable decision. What's more, both of their options available to Candace and Grayson were heartbreaking ones. In short, they could either wait for their daughters' lives to run their courses, letting them die from cardiac arrest, or they could remove them from life support. The couple knew what they considered to be best for Emily and Sophie, though, so the parents chose to take their beloved daughters off life support. To me, it wasn't even a choice, Candace explained to WFMY in December of 2017. You did the best for your children because you love them. Grayson added to the North Carolina base station, We just decided this is enough. They are not going to make it. We prayed together and made the decision to take the vents out. It was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. Before Emily and Sophie passed away, though, Candace spent as much time with them as possible, holding them in her arms and allowing them to grab onto her fingers. And in the future, the family will likely cherish those precious, albeit all-too-brief moments 
they had with their twins However, for now Candace and Grayson are relying on their faith to get them through We know the Lord had a plan Grayson said in December of 2017 He added because of Jesus Christ. I hope to see Emily and Sophie again one day Please share this video with your friends below